So in the previous video, we showed you how to add uh, draggable behavior to elements that allow you to uh, click and drag on elements and make them draggable. Uh, we showed you also to how to use helpers so that you don't actually drag the original uh, element, but you drag a copy or a clone of the original. Once the dragging stops, like when I let it go, uh, the helper has no um, nowhere to go, so it disappears. So in this video, we're going to see how we can uh, start uh, adding these, uh, these uh, tools from the left-hand side uh, toolbar uh, to, the actual, to the canvas. Uh, so to do that, we're going to be using another behavior uh, where we're, we're going to be able to grab this right-hand side and, uh, and make it droppable right, by using jQuery's droppable uh, behavior, which is fully documented here in their demos, droppable. Okay, and uh, I definitely encourage you uh, to go through their documentation and their examples uh, that, that you have here on the right hand side and see how they behave. So the default behavior is that you can drag something that is draggable and then just drop it on, onto something that is droppable and you can then run some logic uh, by detecting when something has been dropped. All right. uh, so let's do that. Let's, um, okay, let's go to what we have so far. We have so far the the tools on the left, right, there they are, the, the three H3, we have uh, tagged them using the class tool, right, they're all tools, and we, we, um, we grab them uh, using a jQuery selector, and we make them draggable by calling dot draggable on them, and we, we configure them uh, by providing an option saying that we want to, uh, the, the, what gets dragged is not actually the original, but the, the clone. All right, so we want to grab and, and make the right-hand side, this, uh, this right-hand side uh, beige uh, area here, uh, we want to make that uh, uh, the droppable area, which uh, is uh, in our code, it's, uh, it's this div right here. Right? So we're going we're gonna to tag it uh, using a class, uh, something like maybe like Canvas, where we want to drop the, um, the, the tools. And so, so that we can then refer to it from jQuery. We're going to say, we're going to grab it using a selector, say dot canvas, okay, uh, and we're going to call droppable on this, droppable, okay. Uh, now that it's droppable, um, uh, you'll notice you'll notice that if we re refresh, we won't see any any uh, any ch differences, right? If I if I drop it, no nothing is really uh, detectable that something is actually happening. What Droppable allows us to do is to now configure callbacks that are going to be invoked uh, whenever uh, something gets dropped. Right? So we can, we can configure here, uh, we can configure a function that can be invoked whenever something is dropped. Right? Uh, if we look at the documentation uh, for Droppable, right, if we go to the API documentation, we'll see that uh, here are a whole bunch of options that you can configure, but uh, these are also uh, events that get invoked uh, whenever an, uh, when, whenever a, an action occurs. One of them is drop, right? So, so when you know, when, you know a, 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 whenever a drop event occurs, um, uh, you can configure a function that will be invoked whenever that happens, right? So, for instance, we can say that this is the function that I want to invoke. It could be embedded right here as, a, as an anonymous function, or it could be a different function altogether somewhere declared elsewhere. Uh, when this function gets, gets invoked, it passes as arguments uh, two, uh, two uh, variables. One of them is, uh, represents the event um, uh, of, uh, of the, of the when, when the event occur, when the drop event occur, uh, it'll have timestamp of when it occur, and also a UI uh, object that represents the you know what got dropped. Okay, so for now let's um, let's just make an alert here that uh, an element has been dropped. So a tool was dropped. Okay, uh, so let's uh, refresh our page here. Uh, and now when I when I drag a tool and I drop it on the canvas, notice that it says alert. The tool was dropped. And there it is. Right right now nothing is happening. What we want to be able to do is to record the fact that these tools uh, were dropped and perhaps distinguish on which tool was dropped, either one, two, or three. Right? Uh, we'll, we're going to create a little data model uh, where we keep track of all the elements that were dropped on the, on the canvas. So we'll, uh, for instance, we could uh, create a variable that call it maybe a diagram right? uh, that keeps, keeps track of 
uh, a collection of all the tools that have been dropped in the diagram, right? Uh, and then whenever a tool was, was dropped, maybe we can create a new instance, maybe a new node, right? Uh, that um, has an, uh, an object uh, that um, uh, of the tool that was dropped. For instance, we can, we can uh, this node can have maybe a unique identifier of a new object instance that has been dropped. Uh, maybe we can use maybe ID. Uh, and we can tag it, uh, maybe we can create a unique identifier with uh, maybe like a timestamp. Uh, for that, we can create a new, uh, a new date instance and then uh, get the current time. That will be, you know, how many milliseconds from, you know, January 1970 or something like that. Once we have a node instance, maybe we can add it to the diagram. We can say diagram uh, dot uh, push. We can add the new node in there, right? Uh, at the end, we can then perhaps uh, write it out to the console to see what our diagram looks like so far. Right, so let's go remove the alert uh, and let's um, refresh this uh, and let's uh, look at the console. Console, let's move this to the bottom perhaps. There we go. Uh, so let's drag tool one. There we go. So we have an array uh, of an object right, that has a unique identifier. If we drop another one, I right, notice that we have an array of two elements, right? Each one with a unique identifier. Right, these are the two elements with unique identifiers. And if we drop a third one, right, we'll have a yet another array with the three elements that were dropped. Okay. Um, so what we need to do next is is uh, be able to um, to uh, in in the data model that we're keeping track of this diagram is to know whether it was two one, two, or three. So that we can record these, uh, and um, and perhaps later on we can render uh, the canvas on the right hand side. So to do that, uh, we need to be able to distinguish uh, what what type of tool was it. Right? We could look at the label to see what it is, uh, or we can uh, give it a, maybe a, a more uh, abstract rep uh, uh, meaning. For instance, this might be tool uh, one, right? Or give them a name, right? Tool two uh, or tool three. Uh, and then in the in the um, in the in the droppable, we can get a we can take a look at the UI uh, object and see and see uh, what the uh, what HTML what DOM uh, element was actually dropped onto onto the droppable uh, canvas. Uh, for that, uh, let's uh, take a look at the uh, we can we can we can uh, refresh and, and step through the code and put a drop put a um, a breakpoint. Um, the source. We can take a look at the at the code. Right, put a drop, uh, put a breakpoint right here, so that we can look at uh, what this UI uh, or this event uh, generates. So let's drop a tool, tool one. Right, and if we look at the UI, right, we'll notice that it has a helper, a position, an offset. If we look at the helper, this is the this is the element that was dropped. Right? So you notice that if I if I hover, uh, it, it highlights on the page uh, the element that is being dropped. It says that the element that is being dropped, right, uh, it has a class of tool and it has a class of tool one. See that? Right? If I say continue, um, we we have the array of of, uh, of objects of, that doesn't really say which object was it dropped. But uh, if we notice, if I drag tool two on the canvas. And we hover over of the user, and we look at the helper. We'll notice that it has class two. See that? Uh, so we could use this notion that we can use this information with a with a class tool one or class tool two to make a, a notation, uh, some information on the node uh, to remember what tool was dropped. Right. So let's do that. Let's let's um, uh, let's add an if statement that says here something like you know if if the uh, helper Right, if UI dot helper uh, has class, right. So notice that uh, uh, the helper is a jQuery object, right? That uh, um, and that we can ask it, right? If the helper has class, right? This is a method that you uh, that jQuery adds uh, to to the to uh, the the elements, right? So that it extends HTML, so that it has you can query. Uh, this kind of, of, of logic, you can ask it, does it have the class uh, tool dash one? Right? If so, right, uh, then what we'd like to be able to do is at the node, right, we can give it a type perhaps, and the type we can say that the type is 
uh, tool one, right? Tool dash one, right? Uh, uh, else we can uh, we can ask ourselves else uh, if it has tool two, uh, then the type is tool two, right? And similarly, we can do for tool three, right? So we can say if the class has tool three, then the type is tool three, right? And that the node uh, still is going to be pushed into the diagram, but it'll have the additional information that uh, of the type, right? And again, this information can be used later when we render the diagram, right? To render it one way or another into different into different symbols, into different um, uh, diagram styles, maybe a a, a diamond or a circle or or a square, rectangle or what what not. Okay, so let's let's uh, refresh this and, um, and now let's drag to one. And tool two, right? And notice that uh, in the console we have the array of both tools, to both tools we had. Notice that the first one, uh, it, it knows that it was tool one that was dropped, right? And uh, and tool two was dropped. See that? Uh, the 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 next thing that we might need is that uh, when you know as as we add them, let's put a breakpoint here. Uh, we want to also record the exact location where the tool was dropped, right? So if we draw, if we add a, a tool three. Right, and you do we do in UI, right? You'll notice that there is a position object, right, as part of the UI, which uh, tells us exactly where it was dropped, right? The left and top uh, uh, position. It's kind of like the X Y uh, position of the element that that was dropped. Okay, uh, so so we can add that information as part of the node, and which can then be used later on for render whenever we render the diagram, right? So let's let's add that position as part of the node, so we can say. Uh, that uh, an addition uh, element here is that the position position object uh, for the node will be UI dot position position. Okay, uh, so if we if we reload this and we look at the console uh, tool one and tool two, okay, we'll notice that uh, these objects right now have uh, not only the ID and what type they were, but a left and right a, a, a top and left position for that particular object, and the top uh, top and left position uh, for the second object. This this can then be used as information for being able to you know, iterate over all these objects and render them on the canvas. Okay, uh, so there you have it. We uh, in this video we showed you how uh, to use uh, the drop a, uh, behavior from jQuery UI uh, so that we can. Uh, a, a, um, listen for incoming events when whenever elements are dropped onto other elements and and we are creating a little data model to keep track of uh, elements uh, so that we can then at a later stage uh, render them onto the canvas and we'll do that in the next video